Hello and welcome. Good evening to another evening here at Rust Linz. My name is Rainer Stropik and I am very happy to see you here at our today's virtual meetup. And with that, I would like to bring up on stage our second speaker of the evening. Hello, Vitaly. Hello, hello, Rainer. Again, thank you for being with us here at Rust Linz and the stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rainer. So it's it's my second uh time speaking at Russ Linz actually like uh, last time I was speaking a year ago and I was physically in Linz once by the way and uh, I love I love Kunstmuseum Lentas by the way so I enjoyed it very much so yeah I'm uh, I like Linz a lot uh, and here I'm going to talk uh, with you about Rust Trova our recently released ID uh, Rust ID and this is actually first ever public talk on Rust Trova, to my knowledge. So, and I'm glad that it's uh, Rust Linz where I'm speaking about it. So, uh, well, we all developers, we know what ID is about. But uh, Rust Trova is a little bit special here. Like, so here is, uh, let me start with an idea that we put behind uh, Rust Trova. So uh, there is a compiler, and uh, Rust compiler, as we know it, is very strict. It requires us to write absolutely correct code in Rust. And then there are we developers. And we developers, we are not that strict. We make uh, mistakes. Sometimes we don't know how to write this stuff correctly. And uh, Rastrova is something between a developer and a compiler. So this position sitting between these two uh, things actually gives us like, an understanding. Why do we need that? So an idea behind Rastrova is to bring thoughts from a developer, developer's ideas to something that is understandable by a compiler. And in this very talk, I'm going to show you some features that uh, implements exactly this idea. So how to bring ideas from a developer to an appropriate form accepted by a compiler. And uh, right now, Rastrova is an uh, early access program. And that means that it's totally free, anyone can, uh, download it, install it. And uh, as this early access program product, we ask everyone to contribute. Like if you install it, if you see something, say something as they say. So please, if you see some problems, submit a bug report. It's very easily, it's you just use this um, menu item for submitting bug report, and then you just go to our issue tracker, and then everything is included, like you can, you can uh, attach your logs, stuff like that. So please, so we are doing this product for developers. So we want developers to be happy using this product. So that's why we ask to submit bug reports or maybe feature requests or, or whatever. So we are very open speaking to uh, Rust developers because we are doing a product for them. Uh, so in this talk, I will show you my screen, my IDE. So here is Rust Trova. And uh, I will show how to use it and how we see the process of development in Rust. So, and how we build Rust Trova around this very process. Okay, so, so some of you uh, don't like, as, as, as I, I know, uh, light themes. I prefer light themes. Some of you may prefer dark ones. And it's very easy to switch, of course. And I will start showing you these features with this control back tick feature. So it's very easy to, to just uh, choose some other theme. For example, it can be something dark, like here or another dark team or very high contrast team. So I myself prefer light one, but it's it's very easy to, to change actually. Um, I, you see that I'm using like huge uh, font size here 
and some of us need that. Of course, it's possible to make it smaller or larger. Everything is possible here. And I am using Zoom here. Once again, control big tick and Zoom can give you like 100 or 200 Zoom. And it's very conveniently switched. And um, well, it's a very useful feature because like sometimes I feel like my eyes are not that good as they used to be. So I need something like that. And it's, it's important to have uh, an easy, easy thing to, to change that. Um, so we have a project window as usual. I will show it to you like this one. And we can explore our projects, of course. We also have a cargo tool window and we use cargo behind that pro uh, that project. So every project management task is done via cargo. So of course we, we use that. So here you can see this uh, one binary in this project. It's a very small one, just nothing behind this uh, Hello uh, World project. So we can, uh, I, I don't use tabs here. You see there are no tabs and I will use command E to, to switch between uh, files in this project. So you will see that very often here. And of course I can run a program. And when I run a program here, I actually invoke Rust compiler and it builds everything. And then it, we run it and we see that this, this phrase is printed here. So, um, but this is ID, but uh, the main idea behind ID is to make it easier to write code. So let me show you a lot of like tricks how we write code in Rust, well, using Rust over here. So I'll, I'll start right here and I will remove this for now. And by the way, you can see those like uh, tips at the bottom part of the screen, if you are interested in uh, shortcuts, they're written there. So you can uh, uh, read it uh, and uh, use on yourself uh, if you like. So I want to do something like this. So I can add format string argument. Of course, I can write it like by typing, but I can also do something like this. So I want to have the, 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 the same line but like this. So you see, it's like faster. So we are making this stuff faster. Like right now, uh, maybe, maybe I don't want to have this uh, a literal. So let me introduce a variable, for example, here, variable, just, just one shortcut. And that will be name. What are we actually saying here? So very easy, and it's a, an example of a refactoring here. So we just uh, uh, extract a variable and we give it a name and you see that it's done very quickly. And uh, of course, usually we, if we are writing some uh, desktop application, we use command line arguments. And uh, for that, we'll need some uh, structure. Let me write it here, so like, like structure, and of course, everything is uh, auto-completed. So that will be a structure with arguments. And uh, I will define a variable for command line arguments. But remember, I'm showing you uh, tricks. So this is not tricks, okay? So this is just regular programming. But uh, now I'm going to show you tricks. Like for example, so you want this name uh, come from command line arguments. Okay, I'll write it as if it's there, but of course it's not. And you see that this uh, uh, underline red, red line here, so something is wrong and we can check what is wrong and we can actually fix it. So how to fix this? Well, we have to add uh, this field to type. We can do that very easily. So what's it? It's a string actually. Okay, great. But now you can see another uh, issue. Like when we define the variable for arguments, there is an error there. And there is an easy way to go to that error. I just pr uh, press F2 and I'm here at this very position of the next error. 
So once again, this is something to make you code faster. So what's the problem here? There are missing fields. Of course, there are there. So we can add them very easily. And uh, let me copy this here. And uh, now we don't need this name, this line anymore. So uh, I hope you, uh, you you see this um, these shortcuts. They help you to write code faster. So that's that's all about trust trouble. That's all about making it easier. But it's it of course it's not just that. Uh, if we are writing command line application, of course we use clap these days. This uh, great uh, crate for uh, creating command line interfaces. And to make this uh, workable here, we need something like uh, parser to, to, we need to derive parser to get uh, all those command line arguments generated for us. Okay, so let's, let's start doing that here. So we are deriving, we are completing this code and we are deriving parser. And here is something interesting. So let me uh, zoom here. So this word parser, it's, it's actually has this red part. And that means that we don't have the dependency for that right now. But Trustrova knows that we're having this dependency so that we need this dependency. So what we do actually, we uh, add this. And at this very moment, this dependency is added to a project automatically. And uh, we can actually start coding using it. So let's let's check that in Cargo Tomo. So it's here. This dependency is already here, but I did not add it here. It, it was added automatically. And uh, while we are here, look, uh, so we can, uh, I, I don't like providing full versions. Maybe I prefer something like that. But here you can see it's a actual version that is used in this project. We don't have 4.4, we have 4.4.7. Okay, so that's a, a dependency management here. And uh, for example, we can also have some completion for uh, macro arguments. Those macro commands come from uh, Clap itself. So for example, we can add default values. So Rastrova is aware about those common uh, macro arguments coming from clap. So that's, that will be just to make things easier. That will be this Rustlings uh, thing. And now with all this stuff, I don't need this initialization and I'll just write parse function. And now we have a full command line application. And I can run it and we can look at it. So here is a result. Um, so this is a way of programming with Rust Trova. And I will go to some more complex examples now. And uh, the, the, the idea for everything here is like how to make it faster, how to make it easier. So I have in this project, I actually have a file with some imaginary events. So you can see it's like a date and some imaginary place, uh, country code, stuff like that. So my idea is to parse and to process this list, to do something with it. So, and along the lines, I will show how we can use Rastrova to do, to do exactly that. So we are reading a file, let's uh, have a variable, file and we open something and then we need a file name and it's a path and Rastrova knows that it's a path so we'll have a completion actually here so it knows that there is this data directory and then there is this events.txt file okay by the way we can uh, so the, the we need a semicolon there and we can add it by this completing current statement command here and we see that file is a result. So we have an inlay hint and we'll need to, well, not the very best practice, but anyway, I'll unwrap it here. Um, so uh, now 
I want to uh, like to have to make this well we can we can make this name another argument that's not too hard coded but all for now that that will work for me uh, we need to read this file and let's suppose that this file is a big one so we need a buffet reader so I don't want to read everything into one variable that's that's not safe approach as we know in Rust. So let me define a reader. That will be a buffer reader. Uh, and we create it from that file. Here we are, we have reader. And now we, we need to have a loop over the lines. And for that, we use so-called live templates. So once again, so I, I, I'm sorry for repeating that, but uh, once again, the idea is to, to type as less as possible. So because like IDE should uh, think for, for us. So I'm doing this uh, here and you see that that's important thing. So we have a two positions to, to fill and the active position here is actually second one. So we provide the source of data, reader.lines, here we are. And the first position is filled automatically. It's some, some line here, okay? So uh, now we can, we can, we can write this, this code here. So for, for the first problem, uh, let's, let's just count the lines. So we'll need some counter, like for example, this C variable, zero in the very beginning. And then I'm just doing something like this, C++, okay? Uh, well, there should be a problem. So what is the problem here? So we can just, just let's check. Well, there is no such thing as C++ in Rust. So you cannot write that. You need to replace it. You need this plus uh, assign. So let's do that. So this is this is an example of so-called permissive parsing. So we call it that way. Permissive means that we allow a developer to type something in the wrong way, but we try to understand it anyway. And like in this case, if you are coming with a C++ background, writing some Rust code, then you just uh, have to change a lot of habits, right? So, and you are used to write that C++, that incrementing. So we know that. And uh, we try to, to help it like this way. We suggest to change it to something which you should do in Rust. But there is another problem here. Let's check what's the problem. Well, of course, it should be mutable. So everything is under control. And uh, it just... Uh, for many cases, it's a job for ID to, to fix your code, like in these examples. Okay, so we we just uh, do it and uh, let's 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 run. How many lines are there? And it's oh, oh I, I need to, I need to print it. Okay, let's let's print it right now after the the loop. So I'm adding one argument here, oh, sorry, uh, and that should be C, okay, and, and now let's run again. So see how many lines are there, 500. Okay, that's fine. And by the way, I don't like this name. It's uh, C, it should be counter, something like that. Um, Okay, so uh, let's continue. We have uh, a lot of other stuff to do. And uh, once again, I want to show you how to, to code in Rust, okay? So that's the title of this talk. So uh, I want to apply regular expressions to, to work with those lines. So uh, let me add something like here, like regular expression will be once again, so this regex is red. So we don't have this dependency, but it will be there for us very easily. And then we create something new. And uh, I don't have time to come up with, a, with this um, uh, quite uh, sophisticated um, regular expression. 
but I have prepared it already and I will use uh, live templates for that too. I have that template here, so-called pattern event, so pattern regular expression for events, and here is it. So it's user-defined uh, expression, and it's 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 very easily to add, uh, very easy to add your own uh, leaf uh, template. So here we are, and I, I think I will need unwrapping here. And if you look closely. Like let me let me show it. There is something green here, green background. What does it mean? Well, that means that we've injected some other language, and this is a very powerful concept here in Rust Trova. So we have a code in Rust, and this is a regular expression, and regular expressions are written in some other language, and we can do this injection, and we can work with that injection differently. Like, for example, here with this regular expression, we can check it. There is a special dialog for that. So you see that uh, this expression is correct. And if I change something in this sample, there will be problems. Like, if I try to write something like that, it's it's not correct stuff here. Oops, sorry. Um, it's, 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 it's not the correct stuff. Why? Why it's not correct? Well... Let's, um, oops, I'm sorry. So, uh, so where is it? So there should be, we know that there should be numbers, uh, letters here, and I have numbers, so I should fix it. Okay, so that's a very easy thing, but uh, something like that, so we can just check it. And then there is also so-called uh, editor for expressions. So if you are, like not okay to, to, to edit it somewhere in uh, your Rust code. You can have the dedicated editor and you can work here. I don't need it right now. So that's that's an idea. So we are making li uh, life of uh, developers easier here. So, um, and and then I will need a if expression to, to check, like to count only lines which uh, satisfy this regular expression. I will use some other feature, which is called surround with, and it's it is called with this combination, uh, option command T, surround if with uh, if here. So if re, re is match, and what should be matched like this this line? We have this line, but it's it's not just line. It's uh, it should be unwrapped here, and then it should be string so to, to to match the types okay so if we are here and uh, let's run it again and see how many lines satisfy this and it takes some time because regular expressions are not that quick and we still have 500 here there are even more ways to to make life of a developer easier here so if you look closely at this regular expression you will see named groups like we have a group date, we have a group year, we have a group month, so on and so forth. And we can actually uh, extract or request those groups or values for those groups. So let's have this these captures here. That's uh, that is done with a captures function. So we are doing this. Maybe you know what? Maybe I'll need this uh, variable unwrapped already for me. So we are capturing this stuff, okay? And uh, then we can, for example, check a year. So what about the year? It's uh, easy, by the way. Uh, look here. So no, no. We have. I think it should be. Oh, oh! It's it's an option. It's an option. So we need to unwrap it. Uh, sorry for all that unwrapping. It, it, it's uh, bad trust, but it's easy to do that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So here we are. And we have a completion even here. So remember, I told you about those language injections. So we've analyzed that regular expression, and we know that there are named groups there. So we can suggest those names here. So you don't have to remember them. 
they are right here so i can ask for year and maybe i think it's also borrowing stuff so i will need to fix it and uh for example we can just let's let's remove this check we don't need it anymore so we can compare this year for example are there any events events for the current year 2023 let's see how many events like that are there okay 12 12 events okay that's that's nice i think um is it a good thing to write stuff like that in our code like hot court year number well that's that's not safe at least so we need to know what is actually current year is and we can use chrono library for that for example and uh, that's another feature actually another collection of features so we're using chrono but there is no such dependency at this time. Well, Rustova can help us. Just easily add it to the list of dependencies. And maybe we can ask for local time and there is now function. <clears throat> and uh, from this variable, we can get a year. For example, here is this uh, year uh, property specifically for that. But uh, I need a string. After all, part of expression uh, is a string. So uh, I'll use format for that. And this is a very new feature. It's a really brand new feature that was implemented like, like days ago. And it's available from the most recent build. Uh, it's uh, completion for format strings. You know what? I never remember all those stuff, all that stuff here. So what to write? And here I have all of, all the examples. Like I can extract month or day or whatever, like all format stuff is right here. I will need year, but uh, you see that it, it, it makes life of a developer much easier. Okay. And uh, well, you may think, by the way, let me, let me pause for, make a pause for, for a second. Uh, you may like have this uh, idea that I am selling, well, well, I'm not selling because Rastrova is not a paid product at this time. And it's not going to be paid product for some time in the future while it's in early access period. But uh, uh, my idea is that this uh, help helps developer a lot. Like, we don't have to remember things. We don't have to be very precise. And uh, IDE is going to help us. That is how IDEs should work. They should not punish us for our mistakes as uh, compilers usually do. So they say, you have an error. Of course, Rust compiler can give recommendations. We know that. And uh, error messages are really great. But the goal of IDE is completely different. The goal of IDE is to give us a solution to our problem. And this is exactly what I am trying to show to you, how Rastrova is helping a developer to fix their problems. Okay, so uh, this is a year now. And uh, so let's, let's compare with this year. And uh, of course, I don't, I don't like this. Uh, why 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 it's uh, it, it's year now it should be current year right, right. something like that it's, uh, current year okay so it was 12 let's check if, if we are doing uh, there's some some issue there is some issue of course it's um i think it should be like string yep it should be string here let's run it again and how many lines 12 okay so like this is this is this works for now um okay uh we have we have much more actually so uh so we have this uh, current year calculation and we have quite a huge uh, main function right now so let's extract this uh, calculation for a current year to a like function. Oops, sorry, 
that's dock screen, which doesn't look good with this uh, zooms, uh, zoom level. So uh, I'm extracting function. If you don't remember a shortcut, there is a shortcut for that, but I can use a menu. I'll extract method here, and I will call it uh, current year. No arguments, obviously. So that's it. And let me jump to it. Here we are. And once I have a function, I have to write tests for it. Or maybe I should write tests before writing this function. But uh, in this case, it's vice versa. So how do we write tests? So we usually, in Rust, we have testing modules. And I am using live template here for generating this testing module. And it was tmod. And I have test functions here. Maybe this test current year. And how do I write those tests? Well, maybe a sort equal, something like that. But once again, these are more live templates for developers, like a sort equals. Like uh, current year, uh, which should be, I'll make a mistake for now, like this one. And uh, one more a short equals for the same function, uh, like the right one. Well, very stupid, but I'm sorry. Uh, we can run those tests. I just want to show you one uh, nice, nice feature here. So let's run those tests. And uh, we can see that there are some problems. And it's very easily to, easy to see where we have a problem. Like this call is all right, but this call is a bit problematic. So we have some issues here. And of course, we have fixed it. We can fix it. So the suggestion is to do change to 2023. And if we change that, of course, that should work. Or I hope so. Now we have two or so equals, which are the same. But still, so live templates, we generate test module, test function, are sort equal. Everything is generated very quickly. Uh, OK. Even more things to, to do. And um, let's, for example, uh, we have this uh, event information. We can uh, put them, uh, put this stuff into some structure. Like, for example, we have this uh, structure event info with two fields, date, which is string. For simplicity, uh, I would never do that with strings, but for now, that's, that will suffice. Uh, location, date, and location. And we want to fill some uh, variable right here, event info, and Date will be so once again. I am using those uh, captures that will be date. Okay, this will be location. Everything is order completed, of course. So, caps um, this will be like location, right? Yeah, here. And then I think I believe we need to, to convert everything to strings here and add uh, number. Get it here. Once again, to string. So we have this event info and complete current statement adds a semicolon for me. And uh, with, well, we can print it or alternatively, we can put them into vector. Like let's let's collect all the recent uh, events to the, to the vector. Select vector, some vector events with uh, the vector of, uh, and info, it's empty vector at this time. And like if it's a current year, recent event, I will just add it to this vector. Well, events, it's called events. And I have several suggestions. First, like let's make events mutable once again. Like when I'm defining a variable, 
I, I just don't want to have it uh, like mutable. I don't know how I'm going to use it. But Rastrova, tell me, well, it is mutable because you are trying to change it somehow. Okay, let's make it mutable. And uh, another stuff. So we can do this plus uh, equals in some programming languages, but we cannot do by default in Rust. So uh, Rastrova understands us, and it, there is a suggestion to replace with push. And this is something that I really like because I, well, I have to write code in uh, many programming languages. And uh, there is something that there's my problem and maybe some others have this problem too. Like I just don't remember uh, syntactic uh, things for every particular programming language. So I need this help actually. So, and uh, I believe that it's a good thing to have. So we've pushed it to the to this vector and uh, maybe maybe we can uh, print all, all of them after our loop uh, and i will show you something else here like i can print uh, those um, events with for example for each loop and look there is something interesting here there is no for each method for vector but Rastrova knows that in many cases like this one, we'll actually need to write iter. So we transform our vector to iterator. And then with that iterator, we can do a lot of other stuff. So, well, we can do that for maps, for example. Once again, so I, I need for each here. So we're just completing several methods at once. What we do we actually need? Well, we have this four and then somebody and then some something like this okay and we are adding format and we want to to print this event info there is some problem and we know like when rastrova shows us a problem we know that in many cases there will be a solution so something that we actually need here so what's the problem well, it's not that easy to print uh, event info because there is no trade implementations. But we can do things like this. We can derive this uh, debug trait uh, for this stuff or display. So we, let's do something like this one. So there are two changes. First, we're getting this uh, format specifier to apply debug instance and second we have this additional line here so we don't have to to jump to other places of our program to to write our code because if it's like easy stuff then it can be added for us automatically that's an idea behind trust trova as i telling you again and again so let's see how that works. So what are those events here? Oh, it's test. I don't need this. I need uh, to run a program. Here we are, a lot of events. Um, okay. Uh, one, another feature which I like very much. Like chances are many of you have something to do with web development and i'm a big fan of web development i'm a big fan of uh, html for example and uh, uh, i'm joking a little bit uh, here sorry about that uh, but uh, rastrova uh, has uh, a lot of stuff for web development and some of that stuff we can use right here so uh, there is one thing that i want to show to you like let me copy this loop and uh, so i want to print uh, date and location but uh, i want to print them as uh, html elements so i want to create a template for html here Maybe to, to, to put it somewhere to generate HTML file or something like that. 
So remember those uh, language injections. It's not only about uh, regular expressions. It's also about HTML. So let me inject language here. I need HTML. So this will be HTML. You see, it, it was temporarily injected. So it will not stay forever. There is a way to make it uh, persistent, but for now, that's fine. And I will need a table row and something some of you may know, some of you may not know. Something like that. And then I press Stop. And here we are with table rows and table data. And we have two format specifiers for our values. So what is this actually? So this expansion was a result of so-called Emmet. If you are into front-end web development, you know what Emmet is. It's a kind of a language for generating HTMLs, like in this case. So we've generated all this stuff. And uh, we can say just crazy things like it could be table with rows, with this amount of rows, with this amount of uh, uh, cells. Everything in HTML can be generated uh, right here. By the way, let's 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 check how how it works, if it works at all. Um, yeah, so we have we have a lot of uh, tags, HTML tags generated for us very easily so that once again that's a uh, language injection so um you see that um, there are a lot of features and of course of course i can show you those features like like for ages and uh, real developers those who use this uh, uh again and again they they know much more stuff but uh, I should say, like, for example, these language injections. If you write HTML, you can use this injection. If you write SQL, SQL queries, you can use language injections for them as well. And uh, by the way, uh, the uh, Rust Rover comes with a database tool. So we can add, for example, we can add a data source, maybe like SQLite or Postgres something like that and whatever. So we have a debugger, for example. So we can put a, uh, something, uh, this breakpoint and run the code and check variables. For example, let's, let's do it here. Like we have this counter and uh, like I just run a debugger and it's very easy. So I just can look here, all the variables their values and I can step over or stop in just whatever. So uh, it's it's like big ID. But what I wanted to show you is that how we can use all that stuff to, to do our job, the job uh, of developers. And uh, I think I think that's it what I wanted to share with you. And one other thought. So please Use Rastrova and uh, submit box. So we are waiting for for your suggestions, for your problems, for your issues, and we are ready to fix them. So it's our goal to make this product appropriate for every Rust developer out there. Yeah, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Vitaly, for your talk and presenting us the product. We can feel that you are proud as a company and that you're proud of this product and are, you are looking forward to showing it to the world and, and launching it. With that, I want to say thank you and enjoy the rest of the evening in Cyprus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Russ Linz. Yeah, with that, we are at the end of today's episode of Rust Links. I hope you enjoyed the two um, talks that we had. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Thank you so much for asking questions. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Goodbye. See you next time.